Hey there, thank you for tuning into Duck Bricks. I'm Chris and welcome to another episode of Brick Breakdown, where I'm taking a look at all of the Monkey Kid sets for the first half of the theme so far, granted that it is a three year Big Bang action theme. Last time we took a look at all of these sets from Monkey Kid's team and specifically Monkey Kid sets himself. But this time we'll be taking a look at some of the vehicles and buildings, weapons, whatever that his allies use, specifically the White Dragon Horse vehicles, Sandy's vehicles, and even some stuff for Pigsy. There's quite a lot to get into, so let's just dive in right now and take a look. We'll be continuing this series every single week where I'll be ranking and reviewing every single Monkey Kid set released so far, with a wrap-up video at the very end highlighting my favorites, least favorites, and recommendations for purchases. So without further ado, let's just dive in and take a look. So now that we've moved past Monkey Kid, there is a relatively smaller assortment of different vehicles used for his side characters, although it is still nice that they do get some sort of a focus in larger sets here and there. You'll notice that the first one, let's just start off with one of the focus sets of the first wave, which was Pigsy's food truck. I absolutely love the idea of a retrofitted food truck for battles, so this is a very unique set. We don't often get food trucks in LEGO though, so honestly probably someone could repurpose this into a regular sized food truck, although it is quite large for a regular city scale thing. That being said, what's really nice is that it does actually have a fully detailed interior. If we take a look in here, you've got a control panel and even a fridge built in for him to store certain things. On the other side of the truck, you can open it up and Pigsy is going to be attempting to be selling food from the side with an assortment of sauces, dumplings, sausages. Ho hold on, sausages? Wait, wait a second. Pigsy, why are you the only pig in this town? Hmm, anyways, Kind of strange how a pig is selling sausages, but I won't dwell on that too, too much. You've got all sorts of different frying pans, butcher's knives, oh, oh boy, those sausages, and all sorts of really fun stuff included in the set to make it feel like, again, another lived in space. You've even got some action features inside of the space to cause control panels to flip up and down from the tops and bottoms of the ceiling. For instance, this grilling station right here can flip up to become a control panel and moving on to the other side here, you can see that this control panel is just one that swings down directly from the ceiling. So should he need to conceal his activities, he can. You've also got this front rake here for battle, which thankfully can easily be removed if you want to retrofit it into a standard food truck and a stud shooter at the top. Honestly, I feel like this is one of the most unique concepts for a hero vehicle that Lego's done in an original action adventure theme line where we're getting a lot of stuff like motorcycles, jets, and boats and whatnot. This is a very, very welcome change from the norm and is probably easily one of my favorites among Monkey Kid's side character builds. I also included Monkey Kid's little Tuk Tuk food vehicle here. I know it technically belongs to Monkey Kid, hence the yellow and red being sprinkled in, but it does also belong to Pigsy because it's his restaurant that's selling the food and it is adorned with this pig on the top. So I figured this goes along well with the food delivery side of things, especially because Monkey Kid operated this when he was just an employee of Pigsy and was not yet, well, the Monkey Kid. Moving on from these two builds though, let's set them aside right here. We can now shift our focus towards Sandy's vehicles. Now, despite being a big fig and we've actually gotten Sandy in quite a few sets, he only has one large feature vehicle to himself and typically is mounted onto the tops of the other Monkey Kid vehicles. For instance, the gunner turret on the drone copter is made to fit him, as well as the command post on the boat, which also in-universe belongs to him, but is more themed towards the entire team. You can see over here that this one is a little hit or miss, I'm gonna be honest. $60 for this build felt very, very high to me personally, especially when, again, much like the drone copter, a lot of this is just hollow space. Moving on to the other side here, you can see just how light and small these two pontoons are and how much empty space there is once you remove Sandy. As you can see, there's just a lot of hollow stuff here, which does feel like it's just making up to be allowed to fit a big thing in, which makes sense, but once he's removed, it feels very empty. 
You do have a propeller at the back, unfortunately no action feature tied to it. I would have thought that maybe when you push it along you could have the propeller spin, but no, unfortunately it's just a loose propeller, so this is not one of my favorite sets. I feel like, conversely to the food truck, we have gotten concepts like this before, and it's been done better in other LEGO themes. Especially for the price that this one was at, it felt very, very high to me, so a bit of a miss here. What is kind of cute though is that in the 2021 wave, Sandy's cat started getting a lot of small vehicles of his own. He got one paired with the white Dragon Force jet featuring an orange recolor of a CCBS armor piece, which is very nice for us Bionicle fans to get. And he also has what presumably is a cat carrier, but with jets on the back. They showed it going through the water, so I guess this is also a boat featuring the cat himself, Mo. So. Kind of a nice thing he is included in actually quite a few different sets so it is nice to get this cat in a more frequent manner especially when his first appearance was just in the largest boat he's now appeared in much smaller sets honestly i kind of like these smaller cat vehicles more than i do sandy's large vehicle himself just because of how cute and how funny of a concept they are and because this one in particular actually feels like it works out really well and has some pretty unique armor scaling Definitely all of these sit below Pigsy's food truck, but still nice to get some variety. At least this is a completely different color scheme than what we're used to with many of the other sets. But then moving on from these sets here, let's talk about the two maze white dragon horse vehicles. We've got the bike right here and the jet over here. Now this bike honestly is probably one of the weakest sets of the wave. It honestly doesn't do anything new compared to literally any other Ninjago bike. I've seen superheroes bikes that pretty much just look like this. Sure, it has the horse head up the front, but then again, that just feels like something Nexo Knights would do. And there's kind of a poor excuse to call it a dragon bike by calling these spikes flipping out to allow it to fly. Feels a little bit hokey to me. I'm not entirely sold on the illusion of these actually being wings. Maybe if they were oriented like this, I could kind of see it, but in this particular orientation, it feels a little awkward to me. I don't really know about this concept of the white dragon horse bike. I honestly prefer the two monkey kid bikes more than this, so this one isn't a very strong vehicle in my opinion. However, on the other hand, this vehicle is a very strong vehicle, and actually one of my favorites out of all of these side vehicles here, potentially even more than Pigsy's food truck. You see, what I really love about this jet is that it, again, is not just a standard LEGO jet. You've got some very unique colorations here in terms of a transition from the lime to the spring green to the teal, all the way going on. And what's really nice is that they've even included this color transition into different phases of the build. When I remove a wing here, you can see this color gradient even being used in the interior of the build where no one will ever see it. That I feel is real dedication to sticking with a color scheme and making it work. And this does include a ton of really neat recolors too, like the Prime Empire blade and the windscreen in this new transparent greenish color. So a very nice build, very interesting. This one is a kind of return to form for the White Dragon builds to being a movie quality or very high quality Lego build. And you can definitely see that with the way even the horse head is sculpted at the front, the way the eye works, the way that it's a very interesting construction, featuring studs on the side layered together. Overall, a very decent jet. The only thing though I will say is the price. This could have been a $35 to $40 set if they didn't include a side build, which is what we'll get to with at the end of the wrap up of this video with Monkey Kid sets typically including a ton of side builds to make up for the price. This would have been the perfect $35 to $40 set. It just had to be $50 because of the side build, and that I feel knocks it down a little bit. But not enough so that I would say this is probably my favorite out of the vehicles here, followed closely by the food truck. And then I guess the water bike, or maybe Sandy's stuff, the smaller cat stuff in third, the bike in fourth, and yeah, that probably about sums it up. I'd even say this Tuk Tuk is a little bit more unique than the bike itself, so maybe the bike in fifth. But then we can move on from these builds right here. Obviously a lot less, a little bit less interesting to the monkey kids themselves outside of the jet and the truck, which are some of my favorites. And we can take a look at probably my favorite or at least one of my favorite monkey kid sets 
in production currently. This is the legendary Flower Fruit Mountain. Beautiful, beautiful set. I cannot remember the last time LEGO did a play set for an original action theme that wasn't a massive D to C to this level. What's really nice is that you can even separate it out for transportation or for display. You've got your main section here and these ancillary sections on the side which can be split up from the main build. But of course it does look the best when displayed together, which is what I'm going to do. One really cool technique here is that they used these grill pieces to act as small stairs leading up to the side of the cliff, and this is packed with play features galore. The monkey kid hatching from a rock here can be duplicated by this feature here. You've got some beautifully built trees going along the sides of the mountain. There's a lot of attention to detail with the trees and foliage here. Even around the back, there's a tree growing in the back, which really didn't need to be there, but they did it just in case. All along here, you've got even a sculpture of a bird or a crane flying above the mountain, an action feature here that splits the waterfall in half, which is executed very well, works out quite nicely, and even a whole separate side build here, which you can't even see readily from the front. I'll have to split the side off, but you can see that over here, you've got this bridge going across the chasm and even a waterfall and a miniature temple going along the side of the mountain. Such a unique detailing here. Attention to detail is amazing. And I think that this is one of the most impressive play sets that Lego's done. I keep saying this, but it definitely needs to be said that this is one of the most interesting and impressive play sets ever. Now, obviously there are some cons. If you look at the back, I mean, this is very clearly just a huge facade. It's a beautiful facade, but it kind of is just a facade. Although I honestly don't know if I would have preferred them to cover up the back because that would have definitely meant that a lot of details would have been missing from the front. So I can excuse it a lot more than I can excuse, say, a facade that's just a building. This at least feels very organic and you can display it at the back of a shelf and people would only see the front of it anyways. I love the use of the cloud features here, showing that since the clouds are even on the base of the build, just how high up you are in terms of the scale of this model. Overall, amazing, amazing set. Probably my favorite Monkey Kid set ever, eclipsing any of the vehicles, but that's just my personal preference. If you're not into landscape building or stuff like that, you probably won't get too much out of this set in particular. It's very much just a landscape style build, so I can understand it if it's not your cup of tea. I just think that this is one of the best executed LEGO sets ever. All right, but with that, we have wrapped up this video, taking a look at all of Monkey Kid's ally vehicles next week. Tune in for a new video taking a look at the first villain faction, the Demon Bull faction, with a lot of interesting builds and some of my favorites and least favorites all packed into one way. As usual, stay tuned for future videos where we'll be going even further than that, taking a look at the Spider Queen's villains, some of the other random villains and civilian buildings, and finally doing a wrap-up video where I share my rankings, least favorite and favorite sets, and which ones I would recommend for anyone new to buy. Let me know down in the comments below, do you like these sets, which ones are your favorites out of the ones we discussed today, and do you own or are you planning on buying any Monkey Kid sets? Thanks all for tuning in, and I'll talk to you again very soon. Bye-bye for now.